Well, I think the future of national parks um, is in the young people of America. We'll always have threats against national parks. So there'll always be people who are going to want to over-commercialize, over-develop it, uh, winnow it down. And the only way that parks will be able to survive and thrive as we move forward in time is if young people from every background are exposed to parks. And by being exposed to parks, uh, they're going to become park champions. Now, you know, the media, we make, I make documentary films and I write books and that's one way to expose people to the beauty and the history and the meaning of a national park but I'll tell you it's nothing that I can write or no film that I can make will compare to actually being in a national park when you're in a national park you're in a sacred place and you feel it and it's almost impossible I think to walk away from that experience and not be moved by it and not become a park champion, a, a park supporter and a park defender. Denali has a tradition of reaching out to young people in local schools and communities. In 2009, it was one of about three dozen parks across the country to win a grant from the National Park Foundation, leading up to the premiere of a PBS documentary television series by Ken Burns and Dayton Duncan, The National Parks, America's Best Idea. The project launched a new partnership for Denali with MEDIAC, a media skills development program at the Cook Inlet Tribal Council for Alaska Native or Native American young people attending high schools throughout Anchorage. In June, as part of the new project, a few students met and interviewed Burns when he visited Anchorage on a lecture tour. The following month, seven students who had never camped overnight in Denali before traveled 250 miles north from Anchorage to spend three days at a field camp 29 miles inside the park. Each student brought a camera along to snap photos. They took turns listening to and recording natural sounds with a parabolic microphone. And each was offered the use of a pocket camcorder to capture video of their time and travels in the park. They met local elders, visited an archaeological site, and hiked to a glacier. Okay, so this is a giant Take black rock. glacier. Soil and sediment got onto it. After a period of time, after a period of time, and it basically turned black. This is almost as awesome as Dude, when we saw that fox. Piece of ice. Actually, this is way more awesome than the fox. No rocks, hey. no oh, it's stuck. Dude, that's crazy. It's still going, it's going up. Oh up, my god, up, that is up, so up, awesome. Up, 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 up. That is so awesome, dude. Alright, so we just got back from the hike. It was raining outside. It's Robert. Yeah. It's Dale. And here's Cedric. There's Lee. Peace. What'd you see? What was cool? Uh, the, you should talk about the glacier was pretty awesome. Glacier was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Because it wasn't just white, you know, like bluish. It had like black stuff all over it. After they returned to Anchorage, the students produced digital stories with the pictures, video, and sounds that they had gathered. Their finished pieces were posted online and screened for family and friends at a gathering in Anchorage the following October. The following summer, Mediac brought another group of young people from Anchorage to their first experience in Denali's wilderness backcountry. This is the farthest north of Anchorage I've been. I've never been anywhere farther. I've wanted to go to Denali, but never had the time to. Because I'm pretty sure when we go on our hikes, they're going to talk. So. It's apparently, you learn something. <laughs> so, hopefully, more about nature. <laughs> Seeing a lot of wild stuff. Cool. It's my first trip in Denali. Um, it's really nice. I like it. It's a lot different than the woods I've been. It's more open space here. And it's not so crammed with all the trees. And I don't know, it's really cool and beautiful. You can't really, it seems like you're in a different state. That's what it is. I tried to imagine what the park would be like. I couldn't really, because I thought it'd be just like, you know, the woods I've been in. I wasn't sure it would be that special. But uh, I really like it. It's my first time in Denali pretty awesome. Really cold though, because <laughs> I've never really gone camping camping before, so this is like the closest I've ever gotten. 
and I didn't really think about the bears like being able to like walk around so much for some reason. I don't know why I thought it'd be more like a zoo, <laughs> but I don't know. Just kind of have to be on bear watch more. I didn't know, but it's pretty cool though. You can see one at any time. I want to see a bear and a uh, moose when I'm here. I want to see a bear or a moose. I didn't expect it to be this bright this early, and I didn't expect to wake up at 4.30 this morning either. Uh, I want to learn how to use the camera better because I'm not really good at taking pictures. I want to get better at taking pictures. Definitely, it's going to be something that I'm going to remember till senior year. And I'm only a sophomore, so this is going to be huge. It's going to be so cool. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Denali, I liked seeing all the animals, especially so close, and knowing that they're just in the wild and not behind bars was really cool. Knowing how much wildlife is out there, knowing how much we have to do to protect it is a big impact on me, kind of. It'd be really cool to go up there and work up there, because I don't really know what I want to be when I grow up, so that could be a possibility. Probably the wolves. Seeing the wolves up so close to be able to walk. I mean, I've seen wolves up close before, but not in the wild. Not up in Denali. I mean, I saw them at the zoo, which is not the same as seeing a bird now. So that was pretty cool. Denali? I think it might have been polychrome pass with all the colors of the mountains. It was really, really pretty. And the wolf pack, that was a big one. It was kind of more than I expected. It was, I didn't know it was going to be that pretty because Anchorage just got like it's way different. Quieter. <laughs> I don't know. It makes me think different about Alaska. How it just like farther up north looks way different than down here. It's, it's really cool though. I never do. Now, this was my fifth time at uh, at Denali, and and uh, I hope it's not my last. The park belongs to those animals, and we get to come in and uh, and see their home the way that they live versus a zoo or versus just a sterile, if you will, scenic atmosphere. Much of the world we live in now is sort of a virtual world. It exists on a television screen, on the you know front of an iPod or some sort of other device. And it is not a direct connection with, uh, with the rest of the world. If, um, if a film I make or if a book I write, which are virtual realities, um, affects somebody, that's what I'm trying to do with the film that I make or the book that I write. But what I really hope that it will do is to encourage or inspire somebody to go get the real deal. The, not the virtual reality, the real reality. Not a reality show, but the real thing and so uh, you know a beautiful picture of Denali is and it can be an inspiring thing but it's like one one hundredth of the experience of standing somewhere in the park and watching the clouds play on it and then part or separate a little bit or swirl over the peak and you're standing there um, and maybe you hear the howl of a of a wolf or just the wind or the call of a jay it doesn't matter the the real thing is beats the virtual thing every time um, so i think we have to worry if we live too much in a virtual world but to the extent that it encourages leads us out into the real world then then i think it's fine